Um, row operations. Let me talk about this real quick. What are you allowed to do to a matrix? So you are allowed to interchange rows. You are allowed to multiply a row by a non-zero scalar number. And then you're allowed to basically add rows together. So you can do a combination of three or one at a time or whatever. Now the row operations are used when you are using a um, system of equations to solve um, I'm sorry, when you're using a matrix to solve a system of equations. So this is the augmented matrix for this. Represents the coefficients, you know, the equal sign. This line represents the location of the equal sign. And these are the constants, right? This is my augmented matrix for this system. And so what we end up trying to do is manipulating this augmented matrix to look a certain way so that we can um, basically solve the system backtracking. So you need, you know, you want to know how to go in between converting from a system into matrix form and vice versa, from matrix form into system form. And then playing with the matrix such that you create basically your solution to the system. So let me just um, take a... a, a just show you some different row operations before I actually do something with it. So let's just take uh, one, two, three. Let's just take a nice basic augmented matrix, okay? Let's just pretend that I'm given this. Just let's. This is an augmented matrix, right? Just for practice, I'm going to convert it into the system that it create that it came from. So um, it's a two by three matrix, right? Um, it looks like it had only two variables, so let's call it x and y. So I'm going to convert it back into a um, equation form, system of equations. So I have 2x going across the top plus 3y equals 4 and then 1x plus 2y equals 3. So this is the um, you know system that it came from. Now I'm not necessarily going to solve the system right now using matrices. I just want to show you different operations that I can do to this. But I also wanted to show you just, you know, in case it didn't make sense, how to go from a matrix to a system as well. Um, what operations am I allowed to do to this? So let's say that um, you're asked to do the following. So do the following row operations. So I want to show you this because I want you to understand the terminology, um, the notation that is involved with row operations. So do the following row operations to this particular matrix, which came from this system. I'm not necessarily going and solving it right now, but I just want to play with it, right? So I'm going to do these operations that I'm asked to do. Um, first thing looks like this. And what does that mean? So when you see this type of notation, you're asked to interchange row one and row two. Interchange um, row one and row two. So take row one and put it in row two, take row two, put it. In. So what that looks like for this particular matrix is I'm you know, taking all of these elements and putting them in row one. One, two, three, and then taking all of the elements in row one and putting them in row two. Two, three, four, I'm interchanging row one and row two. So this is what um, matrix is resulting from this particular initial matrix and the operation that I'm told to do. Okay, so if you see this double arrow pointing in both directions, you're interchanging the two rows. Flip them. So you, you know, you might be asked just to do row operations or you might need to write it yourself. You're going to see a process involved with solving the systems where you have to show your work and you have to, um, you know, write each row operation as you go through it. 
Um, every operation that I do is going back to the original, okay? Let's say that you're asked to do this. So what does this mean? This tells me to take row 2 and multiply it by the scalar 2. This is not changing row 1 because there's nothing involved with row 1. Row 1 is staying the same, 2, 3, 4. Row 2 is getting multiplied by the scalar 2. 1 times 2, 2 times 2, 3 times 2. So this is my matrix, matrix that results from this particular row operation when I'm starting with this particular um, initial matrix. So I'm just playing with, um, just playing with um, different operations, row operations, okay? Um, and the notation involved. So I'm going to use the same matrix over here. Um, let's do a different operation. So I'm get a little hard. So I showed you interchanging. I showed you multiplying a row by a scalar. Let's do C, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this could be tricky. Be careful with this. R1 plus R2. This just says add the two rows together. So, but where did those um, results go after I add the two rows together? So what this says, so when you have addition of two rows, um, this is telling you, so the second, you know, R part, this is telling you where those new um, elements go. So R1 plus R2 is telling me not to change row 1. Row 1 is staying the same. This is telling me to change row 2 into the sum of the two rows. Okay, again, this is telling me to change row 2 into the sum of two rows. So the row 1 is staying the same, but row 2 is going to change. Instead of 1, I'm putting the sum of the two rows, 2 plus 1. Instead of 2, I'm putting the sum of the two rows, 5. Instead of um, 3, I'm putting the sum of the two rows, 7. So this is what results from this particular notation, row 1 plus row 2. Where does the sum go? It goes into this, into the second, you know, whatever. In this case, into row 2. So that's very important. Where do the new elements go after I do some kind of manipulation like that? Let me do another one. Um, let's do negative 1, row 1, plus row 2. This is telling me to take row 1, multiply it by negative 1, and then add it to row 2, and those new elements go into row 2. This is not telling me to change row 1. Row 1 is staying the same. This is telling me to change row 2 into this operation. So sometimes you'll see students or people, whatever, you could do it in your head, but sometimes you see people write it over here, let's say. Negative 1 times row 1 is negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. And then row 2 is 1, 2, and 3, and you want to add the two together. So sometimes what students do is they write that over here, and then, you know, pull it into your matrix after. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. This is my new matrix after this particular operation. Um, so let me do one more. And let me just, so let's say E. One more from this matrix. Maybe I'll do a bigger matrix after. So E. So I'm going to do negative 2 R2 plus R1. What is this telling me to do? Let me write that. Sorry. Negative 2 R2 plus R1. This is telling me to take R2, row 2, multiply it by negative 2, and then add it to row 1. This is telling me not to change row 2. This is telling me, to ch telling me to change row 1 into whatever the heck the uh, final result is from this. So what I like to do is, I'm not changing row 2. You're always changing this last piece. Whatever this is, that's the row that you're changing when you have multiple operations like this. This is the row that I'm changing now. So row 2 is staying the same. 1, 2, 3. Row 2 is not changing. Row 1 is changing. 
Again, sometimes what we like to do is we like to write down this operation on the side and then pull it back into the uh, matrix. Multiplying row 2 by negative 2, I get negative 2, negative 4, and negative 6, and adding it to row 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then add them, I get 0, negative 1, negative 2, and these results, they go into row 1, they're in the new row 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. So this is my new matrix coming from this initial matrix after this particular operation that I'm told to do.